excited to host Chuck Dreisler. I've been following his work for a while and doing like incredible stuff. So I thought it would be great to have him on the show, talk about Notepad, talk about his experiences. And like initially when I was early, like went into the field, I was thinking, why don't we have Grasshopper on, desk, uh, on the web? And then I saw him building it like I, I should step back and because he's doing an amazing job there. So first of all, thank, thanks a lot for being on the show. Of course. Thank you for the invite. Yeah. So Chuck, if you can share three highlights of your career till date, what would those be? Uh, so, I mean, definitely uh, the first internship um, at HOK, like where this all started uh, was a really incredible time uh, where I had the space to just like heads down to start making stuff uh, in an architectural context. And then like we got to the part where you had to get people to use it um, while well, continues to be the hard part. Um, that was definitely the start of the highlight. Um, the second and anyway, unavoidable highlight to mention, of course, is WeWork, um, like my very first job after graduation, uh, a, a beautiful building full of beautiful people for some reason, right? Doing who knows what, um, beer on tap in a startup at a job. Uh, my team took a field trip to a baseball game at one point. Um, right? This is not what anyone around me was telling me was a job was supposed to feel like. And they were right because we all know how spectacularly we were ended. Um, but I met some really like people, interesting people that continue to be really important to my career and just like life in general um, at WeWork. Like that's a, as much as we can make fun of WeWork for everything. That part uh, continues to have been a really big highlight. Um, and then, uh, yeah, I mean, high bar is everything in my life right now. Um, that was really strong. Uh, it's, not, it's not as sad as that might have sounded to some people. It's a really good, great place to be. <laughs> but, um, really, I'm, I'm back with the people that I met at WeWork and more people that I've always wanted to meet, um, working on something that continues to be hard to pin down, um, but taking it very seriously, right? And, and doing just like hearing how like Andrew and Serena and the rest of the team talk about the problems in front of them. And seeing the kind of things I get to make um, is just it's 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 a big part of why I'm still there um, because it's just interesting to be around these people and to work on the kind of stuff they are. Um, but yeah, I, if I had to pick three, that's for sure. Um, but working with Mustafa changed my life as well. Mustafa is very uh, great person. Uh, oh yeah, Mustafa, I've met him in person. He's like amazing guy. Everybody yeah. loves him, and for good reason. For good reason. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, so I know you have like amazing presentation and technical discussion around NotePen lined up. So without much ado, I'll hand it over to you. For sure. Yep. Um, get that. Um, yeah. Uh, all that aside, right? I mean, we I just gave three career highlights, but my career is not that long. Right? I graduated in twenty nineteen. Um, and uh, as I've been working and like learning from the people around me that have been in the industry much longer, um, I've been the whole time shuttling uh, NotePen along, right? Which is what today we're going to be talking about. Um, it's like a personal project that I've been iterating on, iterating on, scrapping, and publicizing in different ways. Um, there's been a number of revisions with different motivations, different technical goals, um, different good and bad results. Um, and so today I wanted to talk about NotePen. Um, uh, in kind of like three different steps. Um, the first, of course, I want to tell the history of what I've been through. Um, too much fun to talk about and look through uh, old tweets, old screenshots, old videos. Um, and then when we get to where NodePen is at today, um, I'd like to talk a little bit more in the weeds about the tech that I'm using and why, um, some of the decisions that I'm making about where it's going, um, because who knows what happens next. Um, and if we have time for it, I'd also love to uh, break out one of the Figma files that I've been carrying along for the last four years or so. Uh, just to look at some of these uh, sketches that I haven't put out anywhere for good reason, um, but are just, uh, to me, cute, charming, very wrong, um, but very funny, and especially to compare against what it, NodePen is today. Um, so I can't ever talk about NodePen, especially publicly, um, without mentioning the 2018 hackathons where it all began. Um, I was working on a team with Mark, Emil, Sergey, Carl, and Nico uh, at this hackathon. Um, where the premise was uh, Rhino, the people at McNeil, showed up with this cool new tech, right? Rhino can run head headlessly and headlessly with Grasshopper. You know, they showed us in a room that it was actually working. Here are some of the limitations. 
Um, and at the time, right, I was a baby uh, technologically, uh, like skills wise and like anything I might know. Um, but I knew I liked web development um, and I knew that I knew Grasshopper. And so this team, by pure luck, I landed on an incredible team of people who did know how to use this stuff. Um, and over that weekend, um, Emil and Sergey primarily spent like a lot of time just making the Grasshopper tech work. I was doing a lot of web, web mostly web based work at the time. Um, but at the end of the hackathon, uh, we demonstrated taking a script, uploading it to the web, um, and and running it by changing a few parameters. Um, the live demo failed uh, spectacularly. Um, our script involved making a polygon, um, and just by sheer luck, we set this number of sides on the polygon to two, which you can't do if it's not a polygon. Um, <laughs> but uh, we were still able to show like to work together. Um, and it was just it was a great introduction. It was my first time working with a lot of other people in the industry. Um, it was like confirmation that like I know this tech, I'm interested in it, and I want to keep working with it. Um, and it was my first introduction to it. Um, but at the time, I was still uh, in classes in school in my internship. I didn't actually start working on anything I would have called NodePen. Um, but this was too fun to not ever mention any chance I get. Um, I think uh, uh, TT Core uh, Core Studio uh, released uh, Swarm as a direct successor to these efforts. Emil and Sergey worked directly with uh, uh, McNeil afterwards on running a compute. Um, like this was just the start of some interesting tech uh, to come out of it. Um, but anything that I might call NodePen didn't start until maybe like a year after, um, where I put this up online. Um, uh, this is very simply or the first revision of NodePen itself. Uh, I run a script to pull down all the different Grasshopper components that were on my computer. Um, turn it into just this like massive JSON file, and then work on the single interaction of double clicking on the screen, um, picking from that list, and then just like drawing wires together. And no work is being done here. It's like purely a visual uh, SVG drawing. Um, and importantly, in this first revision, anytime any change happens, the entire SVG is being rewritten. And this is baby Chuck not understanding uh, what performance means or how to actually like make something work. Um, but baby Chuck also being incredibly thrilled that anything was working at all. Um, right. Uh, this was a direct reaction to one of the limitations of REST Hopper, which was if you wanted to work with the Grasshopper script, you still needed to make it uh, in Grasshopper itself offline. You had to author something, save the file, upload it, and then you could work with it based on how you configured it before. Um, but if my project was going to be like working with Grasshopper on the web, um, then I needed to add a little bit more. Um, and uh, it's important to talk about like my motivations at the time. Um, I just wanted to iterate on a project with things I knew and things I wanted to learn. Um, and that list was a very short, like, grasshopper and web development. Um, and also at the time, it was a purely educational exercise, um, right? Like, if I was setting out to make a product or, like, build something new, there are lots of great libraries out there about how to do node and edge-based graphs, right? How to work with different uh, JSON structures and whatnot. Um, but this was just me doing something quirky, different, uh, who knows, for fun. Um, I was an uh, unknown Grasshopper-related project at the time. Um, and in that vein, um, it was also when I started to lean into this project as a little bit of an art project, um, indulging in the thought of, like, no one's going to be using this. This is just for me for now. Um, can we also talk about, like, what different ways might Grasshopper look like? Um, and at the time, especially because I was just getting out of architecture school, um, I was way too obsessed with pure black and white everything. Um, right, and like just bold lines, thick graphics. Um, and for some reason, like this is the kind of work I was producing when I was trying to make Grasshopper on the web. Um, right, it's just, uh, I mean, candidly, I do still love this. I find it uh, incredibly charming, but also not really practical or useful. Um, uh, but I just, I love flipping through and seeing that like we had like the technical problem of like how do I actually get Grasshopper to happen on the web? And then also, how do I make it look and feel maybe slightly different or the way I would like it to, um, or the way that I think about Grasshopper as I use it. Um, so those are two important motivations that keep going on over time. Um, but this first revision, um, I, I, I would say I'm on like the fourth major revision of, of NodePen today. This first revision ended um, here, uh, which was the first time that I ever actually completed the technical loop, um, right? At this point, what you're looking at in a video is an entire Grasshopper script that you didn't see me make because it was incredibly difficult and miserable to actually make a script at this time. Um, the ability to click on it, grab a parameter and change it, and then actually see some sort of results come back, right? It's like a twisty tower in the background that is reacting to what you're seeing in the graph, um, but like 
You can't delete nodes. You can't do nearly anything other than what you're looking at in this demo. And if you pay attention as I'm panning, you can't even pan without it being like two frames a second. Um, right? Because again, like this was an SVG drawing that was being recreated on every single change. Um, it was written in view, it was like all kinds of technical things that I had not yet encountered or knew would be the bottleneck of this version. Um, but I was just pretty thrilled to see it do what it was supposed to, right? Like it's, it's not saying something might be possible, it's at least proving that communication could, can come around. Um, but yes, this was the end of revision one, um, where I thought like, if this is something people are gonna wanna use, I'm gonna need to actually think about interaction a little bit more. Um, so revision two started uh, immediately after, I just kept working with it. And it's when things started to look a little bit more like, like NodePen today with like the obsession with green um, and these like pale colors. Um, but also there was this strange obsession, obsession with showing the component category and subcategory at all times of the day. Um, like when I'm working with Grasshopper, I'm never thinking about this. Um, but every single video you'll see moving back in the second revision, you always see the category, you always see the subcategory for some reason. Um, but I did start to think about like, what if you could put the inputs on the component? What if you could do X, Y, Z? Like was, this second revision was a lot like, what if, what if, what if? Um, and I just found it like fun to look back at that because I would be doing stuff like this where like, here's your basic grasshopper interaction where you're putting stuff on the canvas and you're trying to uh, just make numbers connect to text or something. But when I go here and go to actually uh, draw the wire, just watch like, what would you call that um, like ever? Like why would you have the need to show the person yeah, you're connecting from the integer to the text. Like that's all they're doing. That's all they're thinking about. Um, but like I spent probably a whole weekend just like, how would I make this thing come together? Um, and the point I'm trying to make with this like second revision that went nowhere um, is that NodePen continues to just be like a love letter back to Grasshopper. It's what got me into software and programming. This project I need to keep reminding myself needs to continue to be like something enjoyable and fun. Just thinking about what Grasshopper could be, um, even if sometimes you make choices that need to be deleted before the thing becomes live. Um, but fun examples there. Um, the best part um, on the topic of fun uh, was that uh, there were some really difficult technical challenges as well to answer. People started asking for things as I was publicizing this, right? Um, this is when the project started to pick up a little bit of steam on Twitter in the sense that like more than zero people were responding and talking about it. Um, and so I got a lot of questions right away about uh, hey, when I'm working in Grasshopper, I'm actually working in two screens, right? Not just one one web browser screen. Um, I have the Grasshopper script above my 3D model. Um, and that makes good sense. Um, but it was also incredibly terrifying uh, to me at the time, um, right? Because this these things aren't necessarily true in a web-based environment. Um, like the browser tab doesn't necessarily know anything about the other tab or the browser, um, how to communicate between each other, um, how to make sure things are staying in sync, right? This was all way above my like pay grade and difficulty level at the time. Um, but right, like those are one of the two tenets of this project was that it's like also an educational exercise. Um, and so I wanted to include this, this to say like, this was difficult, um, but also fun. Um, because the flip side is I got a lot of requests, um, about things that like to date, uh, people haven't used. Um, I don't have a lot of good metrics about NodePen. Um, but as far as I understand, it's like less than 10 people have actually done this interaction. Um, right. So I've done a lot of work to actually pull it off, but no one is actually using NodePen in this way. Um, by default, people thought they'd want to work in the same way, but maybe they're not. Um, right. So working in this new software environment, I got really excited about like people giving me attention, working on something that I care about. They ask for things, so of course I have to do them. Um, but if I if I could get on a soapbox for a moment, one of the non-technical lessons from this project um, is just like yeah, to make sure you can filter and edit, um, and just understand that your time is limited. Um, even though this isn't wildly popular of a feature, I do think it's important. So I'm going to keep pulling it through for different versions. Um, but there'll be other features that we'll talk about that are, are definitely going away and are not, not worth the pain and effort. Um, but that was a little negative. So I want to be a little positive. Um, the, the best part from the publication of this uh, revision too um, was seeing people actually make things like not spurned on by me, not helped out by me, and then publish things that they were creating. Um, right, so like, it's it, it was very incomplete. You could only really make lines. You could do a very limited subset of what Grasshopper could do on your desktop. But I had said, okay, here's Grasshopper. Here's on here it is on the web. Uh, let's see what happens. Um, and I cannot like put into words the the positive, good, incredibly geeky, nerdy feelings of like just seeing tweets pop up with screenshots that look like something you've made. Um, that are people talking about the things they made. That are like things that they're able to share and do. 
um, definitely one of the better uh, weeks of my life. Um, and also kind of intuitively, this is what killed the second revision um, is like, I enjoyed and thought this was so wonderful and useful um, that I wanted to make no pen about this. Um, but the second revision was only going so far as solving a lot of technical challenges and there were no provisions for um, how to actually share and do stuff like this. Um, so I had to start over. I had to like re-architect. I made a lot of bad decisions. I learned a lot of things that I could do better on the next time. Um, the other part of this, the motivation for the third revision that uh, was a mistake um, was fixating on making Grasshopper also work from mobile devices, um, right? So I published a second revision. I get really excited that people are sharing images of what they've made. And also it seemed like everyone was asking for, hey, I want to also use this on my phone. Um, and I hadn't even thought about that at all for this time. So I was a bit blindsided. In retrospect, everyone asking for Grasshopper on your phone was three people, four people on Twitter, right? Um, but this was like the most attention I've ever gotten in my life. Um, and it was very really exciting to see. And I was like, sure, we can figure this out. We can make it happen. Um, so I put my head down and started working on the third revision. Um, I was really drinking my own Kool-Aid really, really a lot at this point. Um, so when I had finally finished the third revision that only solved the, the mobile parts of the interaction and the new things, um, I made this, which is like a trailer vibe feeling post on Twitter about what's coming next for Grasshopper. Right, NodePen is back online today. Please enjoy using Grasshopper and I even do this little like dot, 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 space, 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 right? Online, right? And it was like, this was the greatest thing I'd ever made. And like, look, you can do it online. And I show a little uh, number slider, right? And then I go to actually do this. And this, that was After Effects. I don't know if you noticed, we are now zooming out. I, I bought After Effects to make this trailer um, and we turned it right away. <laughs> um, but no, like, I am very thrilled about the technical challenges here and like, the, the work continues to be like really exciting to see and put out. Um, the problem being, I did all that work, made this work with the desktop and the, the mobile thing relatively in parity, um, and nobody used it. Like we're talking about this this like pre-publish of revision three. It's like less than ten percent of the use that the previous version that I thought was awful, right? Like so, I, I I made the project. It was technically so much better. Could do so much more. The tech inside was better. The code was cleaner. Uh, it, it, it was just all around that in the last version. So I was like, so of course we're gonna do just as good as last time and we're gonna succeed even more, right? Cause it's better, um, but it wasn't at all. Um, and it was like a bit of a heartbreaking moment, but I also took a moment to remind myself like, why are you doing this? It's partially an educational product, or edu educational exercise. It's also, you keep explicitly saying not a product, right? So why would you expect this personal project that is not a product to behave the same as something that like has a marketing budget and is like actually trying to sell something and actually knows things about an audience, um, right? That like, it was a it was a warning that I didn't quite heed um, that if I wanted to treat this as a product, that's a very tall order, right? That's like a lot more than just working on something interesting. Um, and so foreshadowing um, to the actual release of uh, version three, like revision three, I would say of NodePen 1.0 on the repo and the NodePen that you can see today um, which is where I, I finished the other part of the project for the third revision, right? There was make it work on mobile and then there was make it somewhere where you can share the scripts. Um, so the release didn't go as well as I wanted, whatever, there was more work to do. I worked on this, the, the rest of the infrastructure for making and sharing. And if you were to go to NodePen today, spoiler alert about where we're going, um, this is like the homepage that you're seeing where you can sign up, you can make an account, you can, you can take your scripts, you can save them, and then you can share them. Um, and then one day I wake up after this is published um, and David Manns, who, who's, who's at fault for everything about my life today, who, who got me my first internship at HOK, right, taught me um, at Pratt. He showed up and he had made something I had never seen before. Um, he made scripts, uh, right, and for Surface, I could go in and just look at literally what he made. Um, I could jump over and I could see the results of it coming out of there, um, right. And the good feelings were back uh, from the second revision. Um, right. Who cares that people aren't using it on mobile? Um, your ex-professor just used the thing you made that he, in a lot of ways, taught you how to do um, and gave you something back that was really interesting. Um, right. And so not a lot of technical talk yet. Um, but uh, as far as the soapbox is, is concerned, um, this last revision where I did focus on, like, the parts that were interesting for it uh, and like that people might actually want to use that I just found really rewarding. Um, continue to be the good part um, of this project. Um, 
But that was revision three. I had all these big dreams and ideas about where this was going. And before I get to the next slide, I want to remind like the tagline and the one line on the front page of Notepen um, is same grasser, new digs, right? I want to take Grasshopper and I want to do it online. Um, so I released this in January of this year. And a few months later, I think everyone's well aware at this point, Grasshopper 2 happens out of nowhere, right? No one, like we've, we've been hearing for years that it's coming. And then out of nowhere, I wake up one day and I see this like long post on the McNeil forums of like Grasshopper 2 is coming and it is not backwards compatible at all. And like David has a lot of good reasons for that. Um, and it's like not something that needs to be changed or reconsidered. But for my project where I want to literally make technical things for Grasshopper work the same, um, it changed so much of the, of, of it question, it brought into question a lot of like what I was saying was important to the project. Um, because from Grasshopper 1 to Grasshopper 2, even the same components that are meant to do the same thing are new code and might not always behave the same in every single circumstance, right? So David's doing a lot of good work to help like migrating from Grasshopper 1 to 2 and get you parity for most projects. Um, but if I wanted to say I'm doing Grasshopper on the web, suddenly Grasshopper meant two very different things, right? Things that look different, things that behave different. And at this point, Grasshopper 2 has new components, right? Different things that are changing. So I had my little moment on Twitter where I was shocked and surprised. Um, but the takeaway from that is for me today is that I'm also untethered now from Grasshopper, right? Um, if I take a look at what I've actually done, right? I've used and learned from Grasshopper and used it as a constraint for how to do Grasshopper on the web. But the actual contributions and tech that I've made is stuff like how to make a, a component, a, a, a new node based component connection how to convert that from its language into another language this way grasshopper right? and then do the round trip of communicating and shutting all this information together um and so being untethered uh from grasshopper proper um i got to reconsider a lot of like what am i actually making this project about what am i putting out to the world right the repo at, at version three was like this long and messy collection of, like everything you need to run the program and i don't think anyone from a blank slate would have been like, it, would have, it wouldn't have been worth their time to figure out how to run it. Um, but what I've worked on for this next version is one, turning NodePen into a collection of like libraries of like the actual useful bits. And then two, demonstrating how they're used, right? And how it's actually useful, but in a slightly or importantly different uh, environment. Um, so this revision four that I'm actively working on um, and what I put out a few weeks ago um, is NodePen, right? Powered by Speckle Systems or Speckle Technology. Um, for those of you who don't know, Speckle is a software startup uh, based out of the UK that is doing a lot of work with regards to 3D data. Um, is like the, the, the longest umbrella I can say. Or at the website, they call themselves the platform um, for your data. A lot of their work you may have seen is about interoperability between uh, different programs. Um, but for me, what I'm using and what's incredibly useful to me is that they have like taking a lot of information in Grasshopper and Rhino Geometry and pushing it to the web solved so incredibly well. Um, so that's kind of what I want to talk about today is like this fourth version of Grasshopper of NodePen um, is leaning on Speckle. It's like a perfect marriage of open source technologies, um, in my opinion, um, from where I'm sitting because they solve so many of my problems incredibly well. It's an incredibly brilliant team um, that's like done a lot of the work that I would have had to redundantly try to do by myself. There's a lot of the work that caused the earlier versions not to succeed um, because there's just no way, um, right? Like, I don't have that kind of time. I don't have that kind of, I'm not going to live forever. Um, I, I, at the time, for version one, I didn't do too much. But these days, I do like to leave the apartment um, every now and then. Um, it's just nice to contribute back to Speckle, use it, um, and and make things happen. Um, so I'd like to speak a little bit about how the technology is being used uh, in NodePen today. And to do that, I'm actually going to jump um, into the code. Um, this is the code that... Um, you would see if you were to visit the repo today, um, right? So uh, notepen, github.com, notepen nodes. This is the repo as it seems today. Um, it's the same one I've been working with since the beginning. So if you really want to dig, you can see how I did some of the earlier stuff. I don't think it's worth your time. Um, but today, uh, I'll show you where it stands now. Um, and so the pro- um, Chuck, can you increase the font oh, size of it? Yeah, rookie mistake. Thank you. Um, so the repo structure um, follows some stuff I've seen in other repos where there's a folder structure for the packages, which are just like the individual modules that do 
useful things. Um, and then apps is where I'm demonstrating how they might be used together. Um, right. So in a visual way, I guess I can come back to some diagrams real quick. Um, NodePen, as it stands, is three libraries. Um, the Nodes library, which is a React application that uh, does all the visualization and the interaction work that you're actually seeing in the browser. Um, and then a core library, which is like utilities for how to work with NodePen data pulled out extracted, because I'm going to use that elsewhere. It's not just in the Nodes library. And then lastly, a third library that does the conversion from the NodePen JSON structure, right, whatever my data looks like, into something else. And for now, all it does is NodePen structure into Grasshopper, because I still haven't finished all the work there. right? Um, but, but these are the modules that are actually what I have done that's, I think, interesting and worth putting out there. Um, and then the apps directory talks about how would you use this in an application if you were, say, to do Grasshopper from the web. Um, and in this case, Specifically, if it wanted to do Grasshopper from the web and use Speckle technology at the same time to make it happen. Um, so the simple diagram of how the different apps are communicating to pull this off is here, where your browser client, which is running the, like, it's a Next.js app that's actually running the React code. It's the thing that you're inter interacting with on your browser. When it makes changes, it sends a new document down to a random compute server. So now we're in C Sharp land and we need to use the converters library from earlier to take the Rhino, the, the Grasshopper JSON, convert it into a Grasshopper script and run it. Um, and at this point, we're done with any work that I'd like actually probably need to do to pull this off. And it's like code that I've written and need to, and contributing back in the form of a package. Because as soon as Rhino is done computing NodePen, um, it takes all that geometry and the changes to the document and it pushes it into the Speckle server, right? So now we're in Speckle then. Um, Speckle has written logic for how to work with random geometry as like speckle objects and meshes. Speckle has done a massive amount of work with how to actually store and communicate with the server um, and the speckle based API. Um, and so I'm at this point very hands off and, and standing on top of their shoulders. Um, but the reason you see anything at all is because they've also provided a viewer for how to interact and see this geometry from the client. Um, so NodePen, anything 3D you see, is now the speckle viewer pulling from the results that speckle is storing. Um, in much earlier versions of the project, all these different steps, if I was working on this by myself, would have just been things that I had to write again or figure out or do. Um, but Speckle does them incredibly well um, and is definitely the home for my data for NodePen at this moment. Um, so you replaced your canvas with their iframe. Exactly, right. Um, so if you're looking at my tabs up here, um, actually, I'll go back to the code. Um, uh, this is literally what my developer environment looks like day to day as I'm working on NodePen, probably a little not as zoomed in. Uh, sorry about that. Um, so uh, in one terminal, I'm running the entire Speckle uh, suite. As they say to run it, don't have to make changes. They're just, it's doing what it promises to do and doing it incredibly well. Um, and then in the top, I have two terminals for the stuff that I'm running, right? So there's the app that runs the random compute server, and then there's the app that runs the next JS web app. Um, and this is what I'm working within when I need to like make changes or, or work with any parts of the app. Um, and so if I jump up to the browser as this is running, I can of course visit the Speckle server um, because it's a real server doing work, ser servicing its own information. And then I have my app that is drawn on top of it, um, right, or, or wrapped on top of it. And so to date, what I've implemented um, is the ability to take an already existing Grasshopper draft, um, drag and drop it in, um, all right, see it as it is, and then send it down to the server from before, um, and then get the results from Speckle. All right, so like you mentioned a second ago, Meyer, this is the Speckle iframe uh, with the viewer itself. Um, and then over here is now like node pin land, chuck land. Um, so uh, yeah, it's, it's, it's been the process of like, uh, and, Focusing on like what you're actually able to work on, what you're actually able to contribute, um, and then also like paying attention to that other people are doing interesting work out there and working with them. Um, if I'm going to jump from like educational exercise to like open source type library, maybe product, probably not. Um, uh, I just have to change my frame of reference when I'm operating on things, um, and also just like invite this kind of collaboration more. Um, the license has been changed for Notepad. I used to be very protective. It was under GPL, now it's MIT. The project structure, right, is based on uh, libraries that you can look at on their own instead of like a messy internal set of documents that I just happened to put out there, right? Open source wasn't enough to just like take my code and just like upload it somewhere. 
um, I have to make sure that it's understandable and something that you can work with up there too. Um, and then uh, as far as technological choices that have been made, um, the first reversion of NotePen uh, was that, right, that SVG I kept talking about that had to be redrawn every single time. And my first reaction to that was stop using SVG. So like revision two and three were not SVG whatsoever. Um, but the latest version, uh, this version four, um, is coming back to that uh, SVG land. Um, because what React offers is the ability to render uh, individual segments of the SVG document as their own component attached to their own part of the state. Um, so I can make changes without having to redraw the entire SVG document, um, which is just not something I would have been able to conceive of at the time. Um, but what we're looking at here is the code for the generic node, um, which is the only element that I'm currently drawing in the latest version where I have to bring back the number slider and the, the, the notepad and whatnot. Um, and uh, generic node takes in information about the node it's supposed to be drawing and like what it's about. Right, so in a previous version of NodePen, this would have been called like grasshopper component. Um, but like, again, because I'm becoming untethered from everything having to be about grasshopper, um, the thing you're making is no longer a grasshopper component, but just like an instance of a, a document template or like something that could live in the, in the node. Um, of course, I say that, um, but the current node template looks exactly like a grasshopper component. Right, so at least for this version, I'm gonna be in this in-between state of like, I'm not calling it a grasshopper component, but it is and will only ever be a grasshopper component for now, um, right? Like if I wanted to describe something else, I'd have to use grasshopper names and terms to pull it off. Um, but it's just, you know, a conceptual switch. Grasshopper 2 was dropped on me um, and I'm just reacting as I can. Um, but if we continue to look at what generic node is doing, um, it's, it's just drawing itself. That's all this component has to do, right? So it's like doing the math to figure out where do I draw my little uh, port dots? Where do I draw my label? Um, and what it's outputting um, right, is an SVG group element with the ID uh, of the actual component we're drawing, and then just shapes and stuff. Um, so if I were to jump back into the document here, this is an SVG document. Um, if I jump down all the way to the different parts of the, uh, the canvas here um, and just keep diving, we will eventually find an SVG document that's being drawn. Um, but importantly, I can pan here, I can make changes here, um, I can jump and move things around without having to wait for things to load in jumping frames. Um, right. Um, so the big technical takeaway um, was that like things that I thought were certain uh, that from the first version, uh, I've learned different things about and are not don't need to be reacted to in exactly the same way. Um, also, one of the priorities of number four, since I'm not doing all the 3D viewing and 3D geometry. Um, is focusing on what I think people found most useful of the previous version of NodePen, um, which is what, like, I want to, like, walk into a document that someone else has made, and I want to just know what kind of changes I need to do to, like, understand what they did or look at the geometry. Um, so for David, in the current version, revision 3, um, he did the work of pulling out the inputs into panels that you can change. Right? This is a very common tactic in Grasshopper scripts where we don't have a UI, or we do have a UI in the Grasshopper player. Um, don't usually, when you hand off a script, have a UI to just like know what I need to work with. And so what we do is we kind of build one with the script, the, the language of the Grasshopper script, grouping them all together at the end and exposing them out this way. Um, but since I'm on the web now and I can kind of like do whatever I want to make that happen, um, is the UI is now based around that like player-esque configurator light situation um, where I can, uh, at the moment, grab different inputs that I want to expose hop back over to the 3D model itself, um, and then just work with the inputs that actually matter for the script, um, right? Uh, at the end of the day, nothing will prohibit me from uh, going back and doing maybe more meaningful work, right? Um, but where the earlier versions of NodePen focused entirely on like, make sure I can do everything in Grasshopper here in this thing, um, I found that people didn't actually do that, right? It's not what they came to the web for. If I wanna work in Grasshopper, I would go to Grasshopper because it can do what it needs to, and that's where I work day to day. Um, but what NoPen can offer that's different is like a comfortable web-based environment to jump into something I want to explore about Grasshopper and just do the work, the fun part, which is just tinkering with it, making it break a little, making it do crazy things, um, and making that as simple and easy as possible. Um, the same way that I enjoyed the Twitter feedback and visuals from the second revision, um, this is me focusing on like the part of the project that I think I'd have be having fun with. Um, 
and also striking the calculus between like I'd also enjoy a black and white uh, discussion with the interface, but like that's not what's going to happen with this if other people are going to be using it. Um, so uh, soapbox like conclusion um, being that like Notepen is and is not an educational exercise to me. Um, right, um, I, I, I am continuing to learn and do different things and try to try to accomplish different technical problems. Um, but also, like I'm, I'm, I'm twisting the levers a little bit or the balance to say, like, okay, now I've learned a lot technically. Um, I also want to learn about what are we making that would other people would find useful, um, that other people would actually use, um, and that also other people would find kind of pleasant. Um, what can I do on the web that Grasshopper cannot do from the desktop? Um, right? These kind of questions that don't have specific technical answers, um, but need to be iterated on in a different way. Um, and at the same time, uh, continuing to make this a fun art project. Great, just something cute to look at. Um, but yes. Uh, project market fit. Don't, no. <laughs> I hear that enough at work that I very, very purposely did not. <laughs> no, right. If, I mean, yeah, and then if it's gonna be a product, that's, that's no, there's no way. I can't do that by myself. Um, I'm having, uh, High power is too much fun. Uh, high power is where I'm working on the problem. Um, yeah. But uh, <laughs> how dare you? <laughs> um, so uh, I'm a little over time, Meyer. Um, yeah, no, it's totally. I, I had a few questions on it. Like, uh, like it looked very performant. So is it like the way you architected, like in the React state, uh, which made it like frame rendering? lesser and also curious if you can touch a bit about like you just drag grasshopper script into the screen so like you wrote your own parser right. for yeah, grasshopper to svg yeah. or something. Uh, okay. so two uh questions i can answer there the first one is what does state look like why is it working like this um state management in react continues to be above my pay grade or something i don't think i'll ever want to write on my own um version three to version four moved from using uh uh, read, Redux, Redo, React Redux, um, to uh, Zustand, um, which is, um, for one, you just see it more on Twitter these days. Um, and for two, uh, the API lets me do things like when I'm in a generic node, um, I pass in the ID of the node itself. And then the only code I need to write to get the current state about the node is just like, give me the state of the current node. like the the, the API to work with some complicated state stuff I don't understand um, is remarkably simple, is remarkably performant out of the box. I can make changes to any parts of this and I will only ever re-render or change uh, that part of that component, um, right? So I think if I were to open the console, um, I am logging out, right. Um, so in the previous, we would say the previous versions of NodePen, if I were to drag this component, we'd see like render generic node, all of them at the same time. And that was a really big part of the performance bottleneck is I had to make more choices um, that were not always great um, for the entire application. Um, but in this case, when I know that state is only going to be updated for the thing I touch, I can like uh, I can know that I'm not going to be doing a performance regression just because I'm accessing a new part of state or data. Um, right. So if I go over here and move this guy, we're only rendering him the totally different A plus B component. And if I move over here, it's only polygon. Wordy answer to say I changed my state library um, and it's working much better. Um, so definitely recommend. Um, the other question was how did you do drag and drop to seeing a grasshopper script, right? Um, and so what that did was it did the round trip um, from earlier, um, but a little bit of a different step, um, right? So I when I dropped the script onto the browser client, I uploaded it to the Rhino compute server. The Rhino compute server created a Grasshopper script, and then it used the converter library to go from Grasshopper script to NodePen language, as opposed to the other way around, right? Um, and so once I converted a Grasshopper script to JSON, I just sent it right back up. Um, and so in, a, uh, in the code that's in um, the converter package under NodePen convert, um, I always get this mixed up. It's, it's either serialize or deserialize. Yeah, serialize, right. So the code for serializing uh, Grasshopper archive to a document um, is living here, right? Um, and I'm not going to step through all this because it's a bit too much um, for the time we have. 
Um, but that's all it does is it takes the actual binary that you had uploaded and sends back some JSON. And at that point, JSON is what the uh, React component library works with. Um, so again, I think these are just like the actual work that I'm doing to make new things possible. And that's why they're set up in modules like this. I see. And I was wondering, since it is a web-based, have you thought of like, Introducing like WebSocket, do a multiplayer <laughs> scripting. <laughs> multiplayer? Yeah. Do I know what I think about multiplayer? Um, I'd love it. Uh, multiplayer on this project is giving me the same vibes as make it work on my phone, where it's incredibly interesting technically. I would be shocked to see a lot of people use it. Um, but also, I hope people would because that sounds pretty fun. And the flip side to that is as much as it scares me as something that might be a lot of effort that I don't think I'd be able to maintain by myself. Um, I also think that like, that's something that you can only do. Maybe not only, right. That's a bit of a taller order, but something that's more comfortable to do from a web-based environment. If I wanted to pull off something like that from grasshopper native, there's a lot of infrastructure I need to add on top of it. Um, but if I'm already on the web, well then doing web-based technology or communication, it's like, home, oh, it's native. Um, so, I, I would love to do that project. Um, I don't think I can do that by myself. <laughs> um, but yeah, if people want to do that, that's why this is turning into a library. Um, Speckle certainly would make that easier I, as well. Now, actually, I just made that connection. That's another big part of their offering is live synchronization of data. I'd have to look into that. Um, mm -hmm. You may have changed the project, Meyer. You may have. Uh... <laughs> no, let me think about it tonight. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because like I'm seriously, I'm like very, very impressed. Like the whole like the way you architected this and you put into this, it's it's a lot of weekends, a lot of grind. I could see so like. <laughs> well, yes, and that's why was... that's why in January you saw a lot from me, and then for the past six months I wasn't posting on Twitter because the grind got me down. Um, but I'm back, I'm back working on it, focusing on why it's more fun. Um, uh, but yeah, thanks for coming, for bringing me to talk about it. Because I do love to talk about this project um, quite a bit. It's your I baby. hope I've gotten that across. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, I know you had a last section over like the design in Figma, so I wanted to definitely cover that before. Absolutely, thank you. I was hoping we'd still be able to do that. Um, yeah, so here's Figma. Um, <laughs> so this is the, this is a Figma document. This was the first time I was actually doing uh, new graphics uh, after the black and white version. Um, and this document has been with me through the entire project because, um, right, you can see me start with like, okay, I still want to do black and white, but I want to do like 3D or something like pop things out. Um, and I don't, yeah, I really don't know how to talk about this in an intelligent way other than just like flip through. If you see something you want to know what the hell I was thinking, Meyer, please. Let me know. Um, but no, like this was like, I want to do some cute 3, 3D thing. Um, but also like for some reason it needs to have a shadow that's more realistic, even though it's graphic. Um, this is one idea that I had stuck to for a long time, which was this like video game-esque uh, overlay that like you have these giant margins off the end where uh, icons are, are hovering and floating. And for some reason, as you're working, you want to see glasshopper.io across the screen that okay sorry i'll get back to that um but yeah, you see like i was trying to deal with colors and like putting things in 3d and giving them shadows for some reason um but this is just i don't know like i'm just going to keep saying this is wild for me to see i don't know what i was thinking i was having a lot of fun um but no this is like a almost like a phone app now that i look at it it feels like um small tangent the project was called glasshopper for like a long time of the history that i talked about um, and needed to change for a lot of reasons. The most important being every time I said Grasshopper, people heard or weren't listening or something. Every single time they heard Grasshopper, even in written text on Twitter, if I wrote <laughs> Grasshopper, people thought I was talking about actual Grasshopper. Um, and I can't use Grasshopper because McNeil said I cannot use Grasshopper. Um, you will see that at the bottom of every page, uh, this beautiful sentence, right? Grasshopper, grasshopper is not mine, neither is rhinoceros. I hope that made that clear for my own safety. Um, you know, Glasshopper was also not the right change. Um, and so at the risk of exposing me to another, I'm copying someone's name, right? NodePen in the vein of CodePen, except we're using nodes in Grasshopper um, to like make and share scripts. Um, the name never been what I've been good at with this project. 
Um, but I'm sticking to that name for a while. Um, yeah, I'll just slip through. All right, continued. Because this was Glasshopper, that means your overlays needed to have this like glassy shadow over them. Um, I'm very glad I didn't commit to that. Um, I'm not sure where I picked the color, um, but like as I jump through the menus, I think you'll see that I was thinking about how to make it look like 3D in space, um, but also keep this like thick line situation. Some weird commitment to the borders on things. Um, but it's also like the ability to just like say, no, that's bad, I'm moving on. Um, this stuck around for a really long time, like a persistent, massive header talking about different things in the project, right? Because if you're in Grasshopper, you do have that interface um, where like the top uh, ribbon-like thing has all the icons and things you're working with. Um, but like, I, I started to like the design when I started pressing the delete key more. Uh, that like continues to be uh, a thread um, with anything when I'm trying to like do visuals. Um, it's like, this is just a whole lot, and a whole lot more than it needs to be. Um, but by the time I get to like this thread down here, I have deleted the header, I've deleted the thing at the bottom, I've taken different colors and things out. And then I did this move, which was like, what if I also delete the color? Right? I know I was resisting that, but what if I go back to it? And I got really fixated on what you still see today, which I don't know if everyone feels the same thing when they see it, but this like outline black off black mm -hmm. on the green is just like, it just feels really nice. It feels really right. Um, and every design since then has uh, just been seeing what kind of like changes or, or operations can I make um, only working with those tools, right? So I started edit, editing out some more color. This is a nice effect that I do want to bring back at some point. I don't know how though, but like showing errors. If we have this like white component, how do I like color it in with dots of color? Um, but yeah, it's, uh, you'll see just delete, 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 bring back and then delete. Right, we don't have models in the background. Um, and then, but I must say, you have like the whole UI and theme is very distinct. Like it stands it's, out. Yeah, it's been a fun part of this. Achieved it, I must say. I appreciate it. Um, yeah, branding, right? But branding, I'm yeah, a bit uh, using as a crutch that, like, okay, you only get to use green and a few colors. Um, I, I'm doing all sorts of things wrong, I'm sure. Um, but it's fun, um, and I enjoy looking at it. Um, the homepage with all like the grid stuff going on, right? This was the homepage for a long time. It's just like a green background and then like the grid over it. Um, but yeah, like it's, it came from somewhere totally different and I start to delete. Um, this is the sketch of the homepage with a little like art graphics for the home thing. Um, I don't know. Uh, I think the next version of it, when I, when I do get version four hosted online, I think it's going to look totally different than this. Um, but I'm not sure how just yet. Um, right here, we're talking a lot about how do I work with the grasshopper on my phone and share things around. I think it'll be more about just like the first thing you see on the homepage is maybe like someone else's script with like that com the composition thing on top of it. Just like I don't need to pretend that I have a marketing budget, that I have a copy editor, that I have like all these different goals and like crazy amounts of features. Just like give people what like you can actually work with. Um, and also probably like a healthy heaping of like thanks to Speckle on there. Um, yeah, I don't think I spent enough time on the technical talk that like they're they're doing it. Um, this is the current sketch I'm working on for the current design. Um, I don't think this overlay dash is going to make it into the actual result. Um, but there is a detail that the my screen while I'm streaming does not do justice that I can't wait for you all to see when it's actually published. And that's the drop shadows actually pretend that they're in space. So like the component like has like a higher shadow here. And then by the time you're over here, like oh. drops behind, um, like, yeah, I, uh, I want to find a way to work on NodePen where like it continues to exist, right. In a way where I have the money to pay for it to stay hosted. And also I get to work on like interactions like that. Um, it's just, uh, and again, that's why Speckle has been such a brilliant, uh, uh, boon to the project is, um, it's just a great suite of tools to do work that needs to happen with 3d. Um, and uh, I will hopefully soon be able to start contributing back um, if I somehow find it doesn't do everything I need it to do. Um, that's what the project is about now. Uh, thanks. I wanted to show those oh, ones. Yeah, and it, this could be a bit sidetrack. How do you do undo in in like either on the SVG side or the whole Rhino Grasshopper script, like, like uh, programmatically? My my understanding of um, 
that is that I'd be leaning on the state library that I'm working with already. Um, so Zustin has a number of, I've seen middleware, um, which is like plugins for the package um, and also like state tracking tools. Um, there's different, there's all kinds of schools of thought around undo redo though. Um, so uh, I've seen, I, uh, direct answer, I don't know how I'm doing it yet because it's not done it especially well um, in the other, in the previous version. You technically can, um, but you can't do too much at once. Um, so like what happens if I like made a change and it caused the graph to be re-executed and then I undo it, do I need to like bring back exactly the previous solution or do I need to run it again? Um, if I like did one thing where I copied five objects, when I undo, am I only gonna undo one of those five or I'm gonna treat it as a group? Obviously you wanna treat it as a group, but then like, what do you call that? How do you track that? Um, all of these libraries have different answers to that question. I'm not gonna have to inv invent everything on my own. Um, but it, it, it was one of the more difficult technical parts of the last project. I think it was one of the last things I did, um, too. Um, yeah, I don't know. And as, but if the question was about how do I do it with SVG, React abstracts the way to where it doesn't really matter how you're presenting it. I'm just working with the state and changing it. Um, so I don't have to worry about like leaving SVG bits behind or whatnot. Got it. And like you mentioned, you were using Next.js, so like using that server side rendering, which is also helps in the client experience. I was wondering, like, are there any like uh, things uh, which you would do right now in NodePen, like in terms of architecture, which is scalable, maybe using microservices or like uh, using some distributed way of managing it? What What are your thoughts? Yeah, uh, deploying this next version of, of NodePen is going to be a much more difficult job than the last one because I will be leaning on speckle architecture, which is not entirely known by me yet, right? Like it's one thing to use a library and to say it's doing everything I needed to. But like even on speckle's website, when they say like deploying to production it has a whole bunch of other things you need to consider for safety of like your data and like being able to, to like securely access it, to securely back it up. Um, if I, I, I can't answer your question very well just yet because I, I have not decided what part is Speckle going to play entirely in a deployed version of my version of NodePen, right? So I've done the work to say like, here's the libraries that I'm gonna use to make the next version of NodePen. I'm iterating on it in the open with the packages. But when I go to actually use them for a new deployed version, I'm gonna have to make choices about how NodePen proper um, is going to relate to Speckle. Right? So the big question on my mind right now is I know Speckle is going to have to hold on to the 3D geometry, right? Like this is coming from Speckle. It's doing the work to hold on to it and get it back to me. They've done so much work about taking massive amounts of 3D geometry and storing them in a safe way and surfacing them in a performant way. Um, but does Speckle need to hold on to the graph? Like this is just JSON. This is actually a very small document. Mm. Is it worth my time to plug it into their infrastructure? Or do I like have my own database just for those graphs and then another database for the speckle geometry. Does it make sense to be paying for two different databases if it's not actually that much of a performance difference, right? Um, so I don't have a good answer for you because I'm still in the phase of development on version four. I'm just getting this to, to do more things again, um, right? Like I, I need to bring back the number slider. Um, I need to make sure I can like do more geometry. If I'm uploading a grasshopper script, I need to be able to handle much more, uh, almost all, basically all this grasshopper components as opposed to like the small set you have in the current open. Um, so I have a lot of like simpler client side issues to answer. Um, but as I'm working with Speckle, I'll be like learning enough to make decisions about what the architecture looks like. Um, I'm sure there'll be something about how that gets pulled off, um, but it's a bit further down the line. Yeah, and, and since you have it on web, there are like, uh, to your previous point, so many features unlocked by the web, be, be it like using webcam or like doing edge inference of ML where you can do hand tracking and do something. So not, not only that, but because NodePen is no longer like only the Grasshopper component library, there's nothing stopping me from like, okay, so the templates I'm providing are first everything in Grasshopper, but then also a few extra ones about like showing your webcam or treating that as input, right? And I can abstract away what that actually looks like in Grasshopper, right? Because I am executing right now in Grasshopper. That's like the stuff I understand, that's what I can do. Um, but I can like, yeah, you're right. Now that I'm on the web, no one needs to really think about or care about if the webcam grasshopper component is actually a webcam grasshopper component um, in uh, Rhino compute. 
Um, and so, yeah, that's like, that's given this project new life for me. That's why I'm back and working on it um, the way that I am is it was nice to say, I want to do grasshopper on the web, but it's much nicer to say, what if I didn't have to, right? What else, what else could I do? Um, and yeah, so more of that, please. Yeah, webcam is a really exciting um, opportunity. Yeah. Like best of both worlds. Honestly, is what yeah. it is. Yeah. 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 And then like my work has been cut in more than by half by using Speckle. This is not a Speckle advertisement, um, but I will be naming <laughs> my first child after Speckle. It's like, it's, it's, uh, it's really remarkable. And it's, it's something I've been like looking at from a distance and knowing that it was like technically cool, but now I've had the chance to actually like pick it up, touch it, work with it a little bit. It's, it's, it's definitely worth it. It's living up to the hype. I can say that much for sure. Yeah. We have one question from Romain. Anyway, I can contribute to this project. Yes. So what are your... Yes. Okay. So yes, with a big star in the sense that like, it's maybe it's soon to be worth your time, right? I mean, like trying to be respectful of the time. Um, but if you were to look at, did they change the interface? It's supposed to be like a, um, all right. I I don't know where it's supposed to be. I was expecting to see like a little projects thing up here, but maybe they moved it. Um, but uh, I have started to add uh, issues that I know I need to do. And then issues uh, that I think someone can like pick up or like as a feature request. So like the list right now is incredibly short. And like, if you wanted to contribute and it says like, allow back erase key to act as delete. Like I fully intend to do that, but also like there's a bit too much uh, to enter it now. Um, as the project becomes more realized, I've started adding comments. I think you saw one earlier, um, right? Like this particular bit of logic shouldn't be duplicated in this file, right? Or like, like just things that people can actually understand. Um, that's one end of contribution, right? Like a small code contribution that you actually want to do. Um, the other part that I'm wanting to be better about this time around is using the discussions part of the repo. Like, do you want to add grasshopper plugins? Like, just say it, right? Like, people have a lot of thoughts about where the project needs to go um, or, like, what would be useful for them, especially now that I've just started saying it doesn't have to be grasshopper. Um, and just, like, having the ability to just, like, have somewhere to say it that's not Twitter, right? Um, because Twitter has outlived uh, its ability to be used for this project. Um, just yeah that's that's the kind of thing i'm keeping in mind um most important change of course being that i've changed the license i'm not treating this as some like precious do not touch without keeping alive thing um yeah i wish i could give shorter answers my awesome. i'm sorry we have I'm burning time every time i answer a question <laughs> <laughs> no uh i wish we can do more I, I i'm gonna wrap up with a rapid fire mm -hmm. round so you'll have Oh. I can't hear you, Mara. I'm sorry. I'm hearing static. Did I touch something? That's it. Sorry. <laughs> It cut out a second ago. I'm just getting like a buzzing on my end. I'm not sure what people are hearing. Um, I'm sorry, Maya. What can I do? Is there... <laughs> I don't have too many other buttons I can press. Nothing is buzzing. Um, Fantastic conclusion. Very, very on brand for me. Sorry. <laughs> Nothing's coming through. There's a little button here that says need help. Can I... Wait, something. Whatever you just did sounded different. Research screen. Okay. I'll do that. Okay. I'm still hearing the buzzing. I'm so sorry, Meyer. Um, yeah. Uh, mm -hmm. Everything available to me. Uh, 
uh, video input, video resolution, microphone. I'm so sorry. Uh, the buzzing has gone away. Okay. You're here. Okay, good. There we go. Now you can hear me. I can hear you. I'm not sure what did it, but I am back. I can hear you. Um, okay. So sorry. I don't know if that was. <laughs> it's fine. Uh, that's the challenge with art. Yeah. Uh, I was about to ask which cities are in your travel bucket list. Oh, okay. <laughs> I'm trying to move to London. Um, I visited once, uh, really enjoyed it. Um, got to meet the people at Speckle, um, right? Uh, absolutely trying to move to London. Um, the thing that got me thinking about moving from New York at all is that my rent is about to change dramatically. Uh, so <laughs> I have to th reconsider my life choices. Um, yeah, definitely London is like the big thing where life is pointed to me for now. Um, but for traveling, I've wanted to go to Barcelona since they showed us what Barcelona was. Um, very architecture nerd. Like, of course, I need to go see the church, the Greek cathedral. Um, but it's everything about satellite imagery, being on the street, treating blocks as places where people can like walk and exist. Um, Barcelona is is next immediately. Mm -hmm. Is there any book uh, which made a big impact in your life? That's a really good question. Um, uh the fiction book that i that i think about a lot um was annihilation um i saw the movie first it was like the creepy sparkly forest where people lose their minds very dramatic interpretation um but annihilation was a really great uh like uh impression on me about how to set the atmosphere about how to like take the mood very seriously i don't like the mood it's very uncomfortable but like they did a good job of making it um very uncomfortable um Nonfiction in architecture school was like a book they introduced to you early, but they kept coming back to me. It was actually an essay, not a book, um, but it was the one about the, the black box. Um, I'm going to upset any of my professors watching because I don't remember the author. Um, I probably should just not answer the question in that case. But yes, um, just thinking about like a, a black box as a collection of like you get inputs and you get outputs. And, like you're being socialized into architecture education and like we're not going to be able to tell you everything about why things are good or like why things are the way they are um but we can tell you the output makes sense um so like uh leading into that um yes got it and what do you think would be the definition to be an architect in 2030 oh no 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 yeah lightning <laughs> round pass i already answered your questions too long there's no way i can answer that question <laughs> <laughs> I never practiced. I never practiced. The only time I worked in an architecture firm was awful, miserable. Um, not not miserable because of the people I directly reported to, but if we're talking about atmosphere, yeah, I don't. Yeah, um, I hope that at least we can not do that. Um, but no, yeah, I'm sorry. I'm copying out big time on that one. Yeah. Okay. Uh, what's your favorite restaurant? Restaurant. Um, there's like a mac and cheese place nearby. Um, macaroni and cheese is my like guilty pleasure, um, big time. Like like four year old food, um, but yes, anything like that. Yeah. Quick quick thoughts on AI and blockchain for AEC. Uh, I have spent so much time playing with Chat GPT. Um, I'm trying to learn a language. It can like tell me things about why I'm wrong and correct me. Um, when you like think about AI as collecting information and presenting it to you, that gets me really excited. Um, can I talk about, is it like anything beyond that? No, no. but I will say it's very, very fun to see these things being used. Um, absolutely. Blockchain? Uh, blockchain, I have even less to say, yeah. Like it's, uh, I have not engaged with it since, I got really into the hype in 2018 when that like spike had happened. Um, and then since then it just has not popped back up. I mean, I've seen stuff come through and all that kind of thing. Um, but no, just for whatever reason, life is not pointing me at it at the moment. Um, I continue to watch for stuff to come out of it. Um, stuff that isn't uh, uh, mean headlines. Um, so. Yeah. Any to share on people who would like to increase technology adoption in the industry? Any tricks and tri tips and tricks? Yeah. I mean, Hypar deals with this day to day, right? Like, how do we actually get people to use the tech? Um, and the question I'd like, I don't have an answer for because I haven't worked with people enough in the industry is like, I, I tend to start from like, well, what are people asking for? I just spent 15 minutes talking about how three people asked for me to use 
grasshopper on my phone. I was like, sure, let's give it a try. Um, and that doesn't work either. People will ask for stuff and then they don't use it. Um, yeah, increasing adoption within the community, I think you have to solve a problem that people need to use. Um, and uh, you have to make sure that you're not framing the relationship as something of a replacement or something negative or something too different as much as like just being there to like be with you. Right. Um, I don't know. Uh, Co-pilot. Um, right. Something like in that vein. Um, I don't have a good answer. Yeah. I think people who have good answers are doing very well. Um, so. <laughs> I'm going to ask Mustafa. Honestly, yeah. I talk about <laughs> something that's like obviously useful, right? Um, I do miss that part of working with Polynesian. Yeah. yeah, and what will be your piece of advice for people who admire the path you followed and would like to do similar things? Um, I mean, I'm a bit obsessive is what makes me go through it. Um, like you said, NodePen was giving up weekends because I just found it incredibly enjoyable. Um, not to be overly hoity toity and romantic, but I feel the way while I'm working on Notepad the same way as I felt when I was working in studio and architecture school, right? When you're not bounded by like actually having to deliver a result, it can remain enjoyable and you can remain making things happen. Um, on the flip side, that's an important part of why Notepad is not a product, right? When I'm working at Hypar or any other startups, it's like a very different set of very serious questions to consider. Um, and so what keeps me grounded and like not, uh, it, what keeps me continuing to work on code every day is that like, not everything has to be about everything. When I'm working on Notepad, it can be about enjoyable and then like different parts of my life are improving. When I'm working at Hypar, there are business priorities, different parts of my skill set are improving. Um, I don't have to be like feeling, uh, like everything is like fun, like a video game all the time. Right. Um, but also it's just the. Uh, some people don't talk about learning as if it's something that they would enjoy doing the same way. Um, but also not everything I do is a learning exercise. Um, mm -hmm. I'm not sure if that was a good answer. Uh, not everything has to be about everything. Yeah, I think lightning round, keep forgetting your lightning round. Um, I see. Sorry. Uh, how does a typical day in your life look like? A typical day in my life, um, right? So I will, we, uh, high power all works remotely. Um, right, so I'm up uh, to start the day, uh, see what things are going on. Um, Andrew has undoubtedly over the weekend done something incredible with Hypar that now we have to talk about how we make it happen. Um, <laughs> make Hypar do anything. Um, my brain is not really in code mode until like later parts of the day. I think this is from a lifetime of working at night. Um, so the early parts of the day are like, let's talk about things that we're trying to do or like conceptualize what we're trying to work on. Um, and then later in the day is when I'm like, Nobody will hear from me, and I'm like making, uh, doing code, and making things happen. Um, uh, the afternoons, right? Uh, I don't know. What struck me when I visited London and came back is like when I was in London, that meant like I go out and I go walk somewhere different. Um, but I'm in New York City, where there's certainly something that like could be going on. Um, but I'm at home a lot. I'm really at home. I'm a bit of a <laughs> really, yeah, homebody. Um, I finished Westworld recently and was incredibly disappointed. Um, sorry. Yeah, I really liked that show. <laughs> Yeah. Is there anything which we didn't cover in this interview and you would like to end on that note? Um, no, uh, I wanted to talk about NodePen today just to get across the, the line I beat to death, which is that it's the project is a love letter to Grasshopper. Um, and that like when the project becomes less successful or more taxing on me, there are times when I forget that I'm supposed to be enjoying what I'm doing um, and that uh, at this point in my life, Notepen is not a definitely not a product, um, but it's definitely like feeling as enjoyable to me. Um, and uh, it's going to keep happening. It's going to keep getting better. It's fun to look at what's happened in the last few years um, and project how how things can start going. Um, yeah, and I, yeah, just thanks for letting me talk about it. Um, I I don't talk about it enough, I think, uh, but I do love it to death. Yeah, and I must say it was quite inspiring to see how, like, you started with the whole history, how you walked this, and it's it's very rare I see this kind of like journey about that development. Thanks, no, I, I really do sharing that and like inspires a lot of people other to build stuff. I hope so. Build stuff that's uh, feels enjoyable to build. Um, 
that's what keeps me going at this. Cool. Thanks a lot, Chuck. Have a great rest of your day, and uh, we'll keep you posted on how maybe I can contribute to North Point. Absolutely. Yeah. The repo is there. <laughs> Thanks so much, man.